Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Craig Albert Church again online. Thank you for tuning in and joining with us as we come to have some worship. Now, we're going to sing this first song, which is a song called How Good It Is When the Family of God Dwell Together. And I know we're separate at the moment, but we can be together and worship and praise as we sing now. There are many people in life who inspire us. Just thinking of the news this week with Captain Tom Moore and his achievement of raising over £20 million for the NHS charities. Here was a wee man that's 100th birthday celebrations were cancelled and he decided to do 100 laps of his garden to raise £1,000 and has managed to achieve so much more and is inspiring people across the nation, if not the world. There are many people who inspire us and one person who's inspired me in my time here in Cumbernauld has been Ivy Brown. Ivy went to be with the Lord on Friday morning. Ivy was an exceptional woman of faith. She inspired many with her positive outlook on life because of the faith that she had in Jesus Christ. Ivy knew that whatever she faced, any illness or any difficulties, that she wasn't alone. And today she is worshipping and celebrating that she has no more pain, no more suffering, and she's with her saviour. Her prayers are with her family at this time, as we prepare to lay her to rest, but we're thankful that she's in the arms of Jesus. Ivy's inspired me 
to live a life of faith. I wonder if her life and her legacy will inspire you also. Let's just take a minute to pray together, shall we? Father, we come into your presence and we're thankful we can, even though we're separate. We can be united in worship and praise and adoration of who you are. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and just realize today that you're a God who's in control. You're a God who wants the best for us. And we can come and give you praise. Lord, thank you that you transform lives and that transformation brings real hope. And Lord, as we continue to sing and as we continue to open your word, I pray, Lord, that you would transform my life, you would transform the lives of everybody watching and that we would trust you and love you all the more. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Let's sing another song now. Um, this song talks about how he is mighty to save.
going to take a minute and have a short interview with somebody in the church so sit back and enjoy this wee interview with Matthew. Good morning John. How are you getting on? I'm doing well, how about yourself? I not bad thanks. Listen I've got a few questions I want to ask you this morning and uh, I want you just to answer them for the top of your head so here we go first name. Matthew Burns. Age. 29. Where are you from? From Coastsife. What's your interests or hobbies? I like fishing, thinking about the cars and hill walking. Okay, what's your favourite hill? Ben Nevis. Um, what's your favourite sport? I like the Grand Prix. Right, okay. And any special talents? Uh, I used to beatbox and make silly noises with my mouth when I was young. Brilliant, you can join the worship team. And also, if there was anywhere in the world you could be right now, where would it be? Right here, right now, because I've got my fiancé and my two kids with me. Fantastic. So you guys are all self-isolating at Elaine's house? Yeah, we are indeed. Brilliant. Listen, I've got a couple other questions I want to ask you. Um, this first one, have you always believed in God? Not always. I gave my life to God when I was five. I was in church until I was 14 and then I went away from church for 10 years. I came back to church when I was 24 and get saved then get baptised and I've been there ever since. Wow, so from 14 to 24, then life would have been quite different to what it would have been for that first phase of your life then? Yeah, it was completely and utterly different. I went and done my own thing, got into trouble, and done a spiralling path. Um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a good place. So at 24 years old, um, you obviously came back to God. What was involved there? I went through a traumatic experience with my two kids and myself. And we came back to church because I just I knew that 
one way with God's grace could get me through my troubles at that point. And I just knew that going back to my father's house was the best place for my kids and me to be in. Interesting. So you obviously believe in a God of second chances if you'd been away and then come back. Sure, sure do. Wow, that's amazing. What difference does your faith make to you right here and right now, Matthew, on a day-to-day -day basis? It builds me up. It, it sets me on my way. I go about my daily life because of God. Because God gave me a second chance, as it were. I took him up in that second chance. God's arms were always open for me. I just simply had to go back to him. Fantastic, buddy. That's quite exciting to know that you've got a real relationship with a real God that makes a difference yeah. every day. Yeah, it does. It makes a difference every single day. So, right in this middle of this crisis, your faith is what's keeping you going, yeah? Yeah, it sure is. Fantastic, buddy. Listen, thank you so much for connecting with me this morning and sharing with the folks at Craig Albert and indeed all over the world your story. Awesome. Thanks very much for inviting me into this. Hey, bother, buddy. I'll catch you soon. Right, take care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, we're going to learn a new song now, and this one's called Waymaker.
Has someone ever let you down? Or have you let someone down big time that it's affected the relationship that you've had with that other person? Has it been damaged beyond repair? Do you think it could ever be restored? Maybe a promise has been broken. Maybe trust has been destroyed. Maybe something has been said and you think there's no going back. The relationships that we have in our lives are really precious, but they're equally as fragile. It can take just one word, one moment for things to start to unravel and you wonder if they could ever be back to normal, if things will ever be the same. A few years ago, Fiona bought me a really special gift. It's the gift of the guitar that I play here every week at church. It was made by a company called Avalon in Northern Ireland, handmade, the perfect design. And I love this guitar. One Sunday I came in to play at church and I noticed that a crack had appeared in the body of the guitar. I was gutted. This thing was perfect. And now it had suffered some sort of trauma. I don't know what happened to it, but it wasn't the same. Every time I picked it up to play it, my heart sank. And I decided that I was going to send it back to the manufacturer. Send it back to Steve at Avalon and say, I want you to repair it. I want you to refinish it. I want you to restore it. And that's exactly what they did. I could see it had been repaired. I could see it had brand new varnish and had been refinished. But you know, deep down, I still knew where that trauma had occurred. It wasn't perfect anymore. You could still see the scar from the damage it endured. I still love it. I still experience it. I still love playing it every Sunday. But there's something still not quite right. You probably couldn't see it. You probably wouldn't even be aware that it's there. But it's real. And that's a bit like the relationships that we have, isn't it? Sometimes the things that we do and the things that we say causes scars and causes damage that we wonder could ever be repaired. I want to tell you today, I believe there is hope. I believe that there is restoration possible. And I want to look at that through the life of Peter, the disciple. Peter had been a fisherman before he met Jesus. His brother had come and said to him, Peter, you need to meet this man. And when Peter met Jesus, this was going to be a moment of complete transformation. One night, Peter had been out fishing all night. And he'd come back and he had caught absolutely nothing. He had failed. You can, can imagine how this fisherman would have felt. His family were dependent on him. The business was dependent on him. And for some reason, he had caught nothing. And he hears a voice from the shore. It's the voice of Jesus. And he said to him, Peter, why don't you put your nets to the other side? Peter had a choice at that moment to say, am I going to lean on my own expertise and my own experience? Or am I going to listen to the voice from the shore? He decided that he would listen to the words of Jesus. He had nothing to lose. He put the nets over to the other side. And the Bible tells us a miracle happened. They couldn't contain the fish in the nets or the boats. There was that many of them. And when they come back to shore, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, I want you to follow me. And Peter was willing to leave his fishing boat, to leave the fish, to leave his friends and his family to say, I'm going to follow Jesus. He was an all-in kind of guy. He was enthusiastic. He was energetic. You can see that through the way the, the Bible writes about him. Sometimes his energy was for good, but other times his enthusiasm got him into a bit of trouble. But Peter was one of these individuals who was all in. We actually saw that just before the crucifixion, as we were thinking about Easter time. Jesus was speaking to Peter after spending these years with him. And saying, Peter, you're going to deny me. Before the cockerel crows, you're going to say you don't even know me. And Peter was like, no way. I will never leave you. I'll even die for you. Just a short while later, as Jesus is arrested and as Peter is at a distance now, 
He's walked away. He's far away. He's looking on to see what's going on, but he's far enough away that he thinks he's in no danger. Somebody comes and says, are you not one of those disciples? Were you not with him? And Peter says, no, 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 I think you must be mistaken. It wasn't me. And somebody says, I'm sure you're one of his disciples. And Peter says, I don't even know him. And you can imagine how he felt as the cockerel crowed. As he realised that he had failed big time. He had let Jesus down big time. And as he thought, is there any way back? Could Jesus ever forgive me? Could this relationship ever be restored? The amazing thing is after the crucifixion, as we thought about last week, Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to the disciples. Last week I talked about Thomas and how he needed proof that Jesus was alive and he got it. But remember, Peter would have been in that room. But I wonder if he would have been at the back, kind of in the shadows, maybe ashamed reflecting on the fact that he said he never knew Jesus, but here was Jesus had come back and wanted to spend time with them. You just never know what was going through Peter's mind. But we come to John 21. And I love this passage because I can see that there is hope of restoration. I can see that there's an opportunity for change. And I can see that Peter's future is in God's hands, and he was about to be released into a mission like he would never imagine. But Peter, at this point, as we find him in John chapter 21, has decided that he's going back to the fishing. It says in verse 3, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now wait a minute. Peter had been there before. We just thought about that. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Wait a minute. Peter had been here before as well. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net and because of the large number of fish. Again, Peter had been here before. But it wasn't until this moment that Peter reacted. It says, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard them say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. Again, Peter was an all-in type, type of guy. He had jumped in. He was swimming to the shore. The fish didn't matter. The boats didn't matter. He just wanted to get to the feet of Jesus. Tells us that the other disciples followed in the boat and they brought the fish in. Jesus was there with a small fire with some fish and invited them to come for some breakfast. It tells us that Peter gets on board And grabs this net and brings it back. And there's 153 fish that have been caught. Large fish. And this miracle would have just flooded back to Peter from where he had started off with his life of Jesus. But he had come so far away. Could this relationship ever be restored? This morning as we think about this passage... I want to ask you a question. Have you wandered away from Jesus? Is your relationship with God broken at this moment in time? People from the outside looking in might think, actually, you're doing okay. You seem to have this life of faith all sorted. But deep down, you know that there's a separation. You know it needs to be restored. I wonder today if there's relationships in your life that you've walked away from and that you know deep in your heart to honour God and to put him first. You should be looking to restore these relationships too. I know in my life there are people that I have disconnected from, whether it be through my failure 
or whether it be as a result of the actions that they have done towards me. And it hurts me every day that that relationship isn't restored. Is there something that I have to do? Is restoration possible? You might say it's too far gone. But I want to show you that even though Peter denied who Jesus was, even though he had turned his back and he'd walked away, even though he was at a distance, here was Jesus coming close. Jesus never gave up on Peter. Somebody reminded me this week that failure is not final. And I wonder if you believe that today. Because what we discover is, here is Jesus on this third time it tells us in verse 14 that he'd appeared to the disciples that had been risen from the dead. He's sitting right there with the very one who turned his back on him. You might say that's too much. But Jesus was going to show Peter grace. He didn't deserve it. But Jesus was going to give him it. Let's look at the conversation that Peter and Jesus had. After they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, they said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And then he goes on to talk to Peter about what the future is going to look like. I want you to look at this question today that Jesus asked Peter and I want you to answer it for yourself. Jesus says, do you love me? I wonder how you respond. You might be thinking to yourself, Jesus, if you knew who I was and what I've done, if you knew my past and you knew my feelings, you would want nothing to do with me. But Peter actually deals with that to say, Lord, you know all things. What Jesus is looking for is us to say today, I love you. This was a restoration of a relationship that had been broken. Jesus asks him three times, do you truly love me? And three times he says, I'm going to release your future. I'm going to release your potential. Peter, I've got a job for you to do. He didn't say, I'm going to hold your past against you. I'm going to hold you to ransom. He says, I'm going to release you into this future. And Peter, you're going to be part of a crew that is going to change the world right up to this very day. But Jesus asked him, do you truly love me? And I want to ask you the question for yourself. Do you truly love him? Do you love this Jesus who came from heaven to earth to be born as a baby? To grow up and to show through his life through his words, through his touch, the power of God. To show through his death, the love of God. To show through his resurrection, the power of God. And to see that God wants to restore a relationship that was broken from the beginning of time because of sin, because I've messed up big time. And because I don't follow God's ways all the time. Is anyone too far gone? Is any relationship too far separated from God? I don't believe it is. Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And the simple response that Peter brings to Jesus is what changes everything. Peter was all in. Are you all in this morning? Are you willing to give your life over to Jesus to say, I'm going to put my future in your hands? The Bible says he can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Are we still going to live a life that is limited with our experience and our expertise rather than saying, I'm going to listen to the voice from the shore? Maybe it's time 
to cast your nets to the other side and see the blessing that Jesus wants to bring in your life and in mine. You might have once lived a life of faith and you've walked away and you're doing your own thing and you might actually have even said, I don't even know this Jesus. You might be carrying guilt. You might be carrying shame. You might actually think, Jesus, I'm too far gone. Well, it would have been easy for Peter to say that, wouldn't it? No one is too far gone to be restored to a relationship with God. You just have to say, I love you. I've been wrestling with purpose. What was I created for? I'm more than what you see on the surface. See beneath my skin and scars. I'm skinned and scarred. Marred and twisted. Scarred by the past I need to be lifted. And sometimes I question my own existence. What was I put here for? In my seams, it seems that there seems to be more. It's like I'm a light unplugged from the socket. I mean, do I really exist to put money in my pocket? This nine to five feels like a nine to nine. My mind entwined, I pass the time. Life circles me as I wait. What is my estate? I feel like I was made for something great, and yet I can't quite put my finger on it. But when I look at my fingers and I see their design, I realize I'm one of a kind. And something created me. No, someone created me. And that someone made me for a reason. Even though it's clear the past years have been treason, I still sense this drawing, this calling, that even in the midst of my falling, there was someone who died to pick me up, someone who rose to fix me up, someone who's coming back to lift me up. And that someone is Jesus. See, God made me for a purpose. And when I delight in him, it's brought to the surface. So you were made for something great. I wonder if you believe it. Well, you can start to discover that when you have got your relationship with God restored. When you're somebody have said, I love you, Jesus, and I want the future that you have for me, and I'm going to put my life in your hands. And that's only possible through what happened, as we thought about last weekend, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And your place for your sin, for my sin, to give us a new start. To give us life and life in all its fullness. So I'm going to pray now. And if you're praying for the first time to say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to forgive me. I want to reconnect and be restored to a relationship with God. Then I want you to pray with me. But I also recognize that if you've been watching today and you've wandered far away from God. Or you recognize you're getting further away from God. That it only takes one step to turn back. I'm asking you the question, do you love Jesus? As Jesus asked Peter. And as we pray, let's answer that with our whole hearts. Let's pray now. Father, we recognize that we mess up in our lives. We recognize that sin can overpower us. We recognize the times that we've disappointed you and disobeyed you. But we also recognize that at the cross, you took my sin and the sins of those who are watching and you put it on your son, Jesus that perfect sacrifice so that we could have life and life in all its fullness so that we could have hope a hope of heaven a hope of eternal life for you a hope for our future right now because we were made for something greater but Lord I pray for those that are watching today that have maybe wandered away from you or maybe wandering away from you maybe turned their backs on you we're maybe playing this Christian game but Lord deep down we know that our hearts are so far away we know it only takes one turn to come back. And I ask, Lord, that you would give us boldness and courage to do that. That we would say, Jesus, I love you, I'm all in. I want you to direct me and guide me the rest of my days. So, Lord, thank you that we can come into your presence. Broken people, 
damage people. People who need to be forgiven and you can bring forgiveness and you can bring restoration in your name. We pray, amen. Thanks for being with us this morning at church. If you've been challenged by anything that I've said, then please reach out. Just send me a private message. Email us at info at craigalbertchurch.com. Send me a personal message on my own Facebook page if you wish. But don't go another day thinking I'm too far gone or that a situation is too far gone. But find real restoration and the hope that can only come from Jesus. The Lord bless you folks and we'll see you again all going well on Tuesday or next Sunday as we meet together again as a church.